We're now again going to deal with long run competition, but this time cases C and D. You'll recall that case C was decreasing returns to scale, and case D was first increasing and then decreasing returns to scale. Uh, label the rows again. We'll do case C first. With increasing returns to scale, row 1 gives you generic that is typical long run marginal cost and long run average cost for the decreasing returns to scale case. Row 2 tells you what the total cost curve looks like. And you have row 1 increasing average cost, so that gives a total cost which is rising. You know that that long run total cost at q equals 0 is always 0, so the total cost curve starts at 0. The total revenue curve looks like all competitive total revenue curves. Look. So you want to maximize profit. You could carefully analyze it using graph number row number one as we've done before for the short run. But here let me just talk through row number two. You want to see where total revenue exceeds total cost by the greatest amount. Total revenue equals total cost and these points. So you have zero profit there. Total revenue exceeds total cost by the greatest amount, roughly here, at that, that level. I can draw that a bit better. And at the far point of the graph, total revenue is less than total cost, and so profit's equal to zero. As a result, you, you want to go to this point. So there's one profit maximizing level of output for this price. And basically, this is really similar to sh short run type 1. Similar to short run type 1. And so, without going into a lot more detail, you can see that the result is going to be row number four. You, the supply curve is going to follow the marginal cost curve above the bottom of average variable cost. That's the rule that we had before. Of course, the bottom of average variable cost here, since we're in the long run, is just the bottom of average cost. And the bottom of average cost is this point. So, the idea of the supply curve is the marginal cost curve above the bottom of average variable cost. Okay, that idea translates into what you see in row four. It's actually the whole marginal cost curve because average variable cost is just average cost. So you have a supply curve that is kind of typical or common. There's, there's, not, there's nothing weird going on in row number four for case C. Let's turn now to case D. It first increasing and then decreasing returns to scale. You have a U-shaped long run average cost curve, also a U-shaped marginal on a marginal cost curve. The total cost curve is shown in row number two, and we've seen that before. Again, if you're a little confused about how row one translates into row two for the costs in column D, you can go backwards. Start with the total cost in, in two, and see that you can derive the long run average cost and the long run marginal cost in row one. One can, again, analyze this in the same way that you analyze a short run. This is going to be similar to similar to short run type 2. You'll have one point there that's the, that indicates profit maximization. And you start out with a 
profit function that's going down, which is a minimum, so pro profits, profits negative here, but here profits has recovered back to zero again, and profits also going to be zero here. So that's the way you can draw the the profit curve in row number three. You if you you can work hard to derive row four from row one in the same way that we did it for the short run. You know you pick different price levels and and see what happens. And this is really similar to short run type two. It's not exactly the same as in the short run, but it's quite similar. And so it's not surprising that you get what you see in row four. Again, you've got one price level where the supply curve is multi-valued, this price level here, where you have two possible points for supply. It turns out that that comes from this line of graph three. Okay, so there's a price level that'll generate that line in graph three. And so the firm is indifferent between producing here and producing at zero. And that corresponds to, to this price level. As I said, a careful, uh, a careful derivation of row number four uh, has to start from row number one and use the rules that we derived before and used before to get profit from, uh, well, to, to row number three to get profit, and uh, and row number four to get the supply curve from D.